Hello, and welcome back to Zim Explorer. I'm Dr. Abstract. And in this Zim Explorer, we're going to take a look at how to use Zim and 3JS together. Let's go take a look at an example. And here we have sort of a bit of a hybrid. Um, it's not quite what we've been doing for the last 10 years, but it's it's uh, structurally the same. And that is that we have 3JS right here in this smaller window, and we can operate 3JS. And then we have Zim around the outside. This is the Zim fit mode, which then can also operate. So a kind of a combination. We've been doing this for a while. Let me show you some other examples. I'm going to just drop this down to show you the fit mode first of all. So there's the blue stuff right here, or we, we call that interstellar, that color. Uh, it's number sign one, two, three. Kind of cool. Uh, that is the stage of Zim. This outer color is outside of Zim. And then 3JS is overlaid and scaled to Zim as, as we're moving it there. <clears throat> so we use that more often traditionally. Here, I'll, I'll show you. I think this is the code. Ignore the code and take off the skybox of that, and and you'll get the idea of what we've been using it traditionally for, and that is we have a 3D object now here that we can then take a look at in a sense inside a Zim and also have other controls around the outside. Hmm, I could show you an example. So here's the Zim site under examples. And if we do a search here, let's open that up for 3D. What do we have? There's a 3D gallery. Some 3 dog, 3D planet. That, that's also one. Where did that go to? 3D phone. I guess that would be a good one. So here's our 3D model, and it's actually not orbit controls that's operating on it. So this is Zim completely kind of taking over here with Swiper, uh, handling that, and a slider, and a, spinning it around with a dial and changing the color with the color picker. So you get the idea, we got this model, it's in, three, uh, it's in Zim, and then uh, Zim is controlling it. <clears throat> but it doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, there's a basic one too, may as well show you that example. Lock it down here under collections and Zim bits right here in the collection, 64 Zim bits. So this is probably from close to 10 years ago now, eight years ago, something like that. 64 examples of interactive media. One of those examples, a few of them are physics, a parallax, uh, but one of them is 3D. Ah, here it is right here where we're using a slider to kind of, I think, change the camera on that. And we can pick this up and drag it. So that's dragging the whole 3JS object. And then uh, this is us spinning it. So note that the drag is in the same place as the 3JS object. To be able to do that, we can't have the 3JS object have interactivity. So let's go into some code and see what's happening here. This, by the way, is the, uh, I don't know if you'd call it an older way, but it's, it's, it's a way where we've, we're, we're embedding 3JS. It's actually overlaying 3JS on to Zim. We've currently been working with a new way called Texture Actives, where we just put Zim into 3JS on textures. And I think that's much more exciting. And we're going to see that example as well in this Explore. Uh, we're going to be looking through code. And if you've not seen any 3JS code, we just did an Explore about um, 3JS code. So how, how to use 3JS in the models. and Or not models, actually. We didn't do one on models. Uh, but the meshes of materials and, and geometry, texture. Uh, we may do an explore on models at some point. It's pretty easy these days to bring in a model and we have some examples. Uh, let me just give you a quick view of the sort of the current way that we're working with this and press on here. There is a Zim panel 
that is now on a texture in 3JS. So you see how integrated that is. And we're going to show you some examples of how to make that as well. But in amongst these, we do have a model here. And this is a model phone, and we brought that model in with a GLTF loader. Uh, the most complicated thing about a GLTF loader is the name of it. But uh, bringing it in is, is quite easy, and I think you'll, um, you can look at this example and be able to do that. However, we may do uh, as a follow-up at some point and explore on working with, with models in 3JS. <clears throat> okay, so... Where we get to. So I'm back here on our example. And let's go into the code. I'm going to bring the skybox back. That kind of helps just sort of visualize where 3JS is in here and where it isn't. So right now, this is, we would never really do this. If, as soon as we are doing this, it's kind of like, why are we only putting it in this little box? Why didn't we have the whole screen there? And agreed, you know, we, we don't really need to. So what we're going to do now is go through a few different types of ways that we can combine Zim and 3JS. Some will make sense for certain things, but not for other things. So I don't want you to, um, I don't know, <laughs> hopefully you won't get too mixed up. Maybe there's too many ways to deal with this. We're, we're looking through Zim our basics two here because these first two were, were done in the last Explore. But we're going to look through number two, number three, number four, and number five in this Explorer. How exciting! All right, let's bring this down here and start at the top of our code. So this is embedding 3JS and Zim. We're bringing in three, the Zim 3 module. That brings in CreateJS, which is what Zim's built on. Zim. 3JS, the latest version, R155. Um, brings in orbit controls, first person controls, and GLTF loader automatically. Those are quite small and it's just easier to handle them all together. We use them all the time. And the other one is the three helper module. So that's what all that's bringing in. You can view the other files here with the links. Here's our fit mode. And when we're ready, we've got dimensions on that fit mode. When we're ready, we're making a new three object with our three helper module. But we're saying, hey, only make it 500 by 300. And that's what's setting up the 500 by 300 within our 1024 by 768. We're positioning the camera, the color management, interactive true, all that stuff we talked about in the last uh, explore. And we're getting a render, a scene, and a camera out of that. Here's our skybox. We might not really want a skybox at the moment, but like I said, it helps show where 3JS is. And note here, if, if we do the spinning, we can definitely see that that's spinning versus that, uh, which is just moving the camera. But if you take away the skybox, then the, the effect is, I, I suppose, more complete. I guess it's just like, oh, I'm spinning an object there, and oh, I'm spinning it again with this. Uh, we might not even, if we're using Zim for various things, maybe we don't even make this interactive in a 3JS way. And note that we have in here interactive true. That turns on the interactivity in 3JS. By default, that's turned off so that we can drag it without doing without doing, uh, because we've got a 3G object, maybe we're wanting to put a Zim drag on it and start dragging it. Uh, that would that would work now if we were to try that, but if we had the 3JS being interactive, then the 3JS being overlaid would overwrite the, the Zim drag or override the Zim drag. Okay. Oh. <clears throat> And we're adjusting, or there's our controls, our orbit zoom controls, if we want them. The cube is there, and we've got a slider underneath. The slider has damping. It's a, probably a good idea to match both your, your damping. So if you are using the orbit controls with the damping there, then this should also have the damping, otherwise it looks a little bit different. And when you wire, it's pretty easy to damp. If we're wiring this to the mesh's rotation, about the Y, that means that whatever the slider's value 
is going to change the y, position, y rotation of the mesh. But if you just add damping there, because wired works within the, uh, within the Zim ticker, the damping will happen. If you had a change event there, you wouldn't want to do the change event. You wouldn't want to change the mess's rotation dot y is equal to the sliders dot current value in a change event if you're damping. You would want to do that in a ticker event. But anyway, when you're doing the wire, it becomes quite easy to do. You just add the damping. And we don't need lights in this case because we're using a mesh normal material just for demonstration purposes. The mesh normal material give a, gives us these sort of pastel colors automatically. Distributed about the faces. Okay. Good. Hey, that's it. <clears throat> and excuse me, I have the grumblies. If I grumble, my apologies. I've been at these videos for a little while. <clears throat> I have to prepare for teaching coming up. Oh my goodness. Ay, 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 ay. Let's see the next example. And we open this up in a browser. In this example, we have a Zim on a sort of full screen scaling the same as the 3JS scaling. 3JS scaling by default is a bit different. It gets smaller and bigger. It scales as you go in the vertical, but it doesn't scale in the horizontal. It only repositions in the horizontal. So Zim doesn't have, naturally, it doesn't have a way to do that, but uh, we have just made a way to do that. And I'll show you that in this example. So in this case, we have no control over the the orbit controls, but we do have the Zim. Basically, Zim and, and 3JS are the same size. That means that we've got one or the other. We can either do the Zim, which is on, on top or on bottom, or we can do the uh, 3JS. And that's the problem with this situation. We're going to remedy that when it comes to the texture actives, which we'll see in the future. But this still might be useful. Maybe you've got some big model in the background and you want a bunch of Zim controls uh, at, at your you know, leisure here and you're controlling the stuff in the background or maybe the 3JS is just some sort of 3D animation in the background. So uh, to do that, we are setting full to true there and we've got an underlay or lay is under. So 3JS is going under. You can also make 3JS go over, but that's not gonna do us much, much good here because then the skybox heights, the three, we can still control it <laughs> because the 3JS is not interactive. Uh, or is it interactive? Let's see, how is this doing that? <laughs> I'm not sure because we, uh, uh, we're not controlling it. We are controlling Yeah, <laughs> I, can't, I can't figure it out. <clears throat> anyway, um, so we don't want that under in this case. And boop, doop, doop. All the rest is the same, I believe. Yeah, we have no orbit controls. Ah, that's what was going on there. So that wasn't, or it appeared to be orbit controls, but it wasn't orbit controls. I was operating the slider under <laughs> underneath the, uh, like right through it. Okay, uh, cool. So that's that's operating the slider. Okay, through the, yeah. so that was as expected. <clears throat> To switch that up, if we brought back the orbit controls here, we still wouldn't be we still wouldn't be able to use the orbit controls. So we can't use the orbit controls. We can still only use the zim controls. But if we want to use the orbit controls, then we say true. So if it's interactive true, that means the three JS is interactive as opposed to the zim. In which case, we get orbit controls but no slider controls. Oh, that's just the way canvases on top of canvases work. The interactivity, unless we set something up to specifically pass the interactivity through, which we've done in, in Zim and CreateJS with multiple frames, we have a next frame or next stage, and that passes the pointer events through the various canvases. Uh, but we would have to sort of coordinate that with, with another framework if we wanted that to work with another framework or indeed on the DOM. The DOM's an issue as well. You can't overlay canvas onto the DOM and expect you to expect to interact with both the DOM and the canvas. 
<clears throat> unfortunately, that's too bad. So uh, it's okay if you overlay them on top, but then have different sizes. So if one's smaller and overlaid on top, then you can uh, interact with that smaller area. And then on the, on the back one, you can interact with that outside that smaller area. That works, but just not if the whole things are overlaid. Hence, that's why we sort of are going to introduce uh, number four and five coming up here. But if we scroll on down, something else that is happening in this example specifically is that we've introduced the new Zim Central. So this is a new Zim class uh, patched in 05 that will help us position Zim on top of a full screen uh, 3JS, which scales as mentioned in that, in that way. So now we're managing to scale Zim in the same way where it will scale going up and down, but only resize and center going side by side. One of the tricks to this is we have the origin in the center. So 3JS has its origin in the center of it, and it's positive X this way, negative X that way, positive Y up, negative Y down, and Z is positive coming out, negative going in. With central here, we've got something similar where it's zero zeros in the middle. It's positive x going this way, negative x, but it is positive y going down and negative y going up. So our traditional zim xy is still in place. But it's in the center and it's kept centered. So that's what the central system does. It's really just a container. It's very simple. It's only 10 lines of code, maybe less. And it's um, just a container that will automatically scale itself to the stage and keep the scale based on the height, so it will match the height, and the width won't scale, but instead will always just keep centering. So it's, like I said, just a few lines of code that will do that, and we call that central. So if you want to match that, here we've added the slider to central. And note that we're zero from the center and 200 down from the center. Um, that's fine. Pose almost works the same way because pose will work based on the bounding rectangle and bounding rectangle is on the outside even though its um, registration and origin is in the middle. But loc will be different. So just watch out if you loc this. Because loc locates the registration point. So if we were to locate at 100 comma 100 Normally, we would expect this slider to be at 100, 100 up here. 100 from the top left, 100 from the bottom. And now, no, <laughs> that's where it is. What do you know? <laughs> okay, what uh, happened? Oh, that's on the stage. So that's located on the stage, and that's not really what we want. Mm, I don't think. Okay, because there it is on the stage. It's no longer in the central. It's just sitting on the stage. Central is still center edge. So we forgot to put comma central. We considered and thought about, this is uh, perhaps it's a fit mode. I can't remember what mode we're in here, but uh, uh, probably a full mode. We considered making a mode called that, but centering the stage is okay. It's just then we would have to make people see stuff on the stage on the negative side of the stage and the negative height of the stage and we kind of wasn't sure quite how to do that. <laughs> so we didn't bother. Instead, we made a container outside and that just sort of keeps it simpler. But we have to add it to the, uh, to the uh, container. So now central is zero, zero here in the middle and this is 100 over and 100 down. So uh, 100 over, 100 down, here's the slider. So just watch that the registration point and origin. The, the issue is the origin is at zero, zero in the center. All right, here we that. Pose kind of like works the same way and the rest is the same. Okay, so that's kind of new. Uh, it is new as of this morning, as a matter of fact, because as we were working through this video series, we realized, oh, we wanted uh, a way to do that. And we hadn't had a way to do that. And also, it's sort of like, yeah, you know, it's okay, but you, you only have interaction either on this or on the Zim and not on both. So therefore, it's, it's not 
all the great, all, all that great, <laughs> we'll call it. And I'm going to change interactive back to false there so that we get the Zim, uh, the demonstration of the Zim slider operating. And there she be. Okay. Let's move to the next example. Bum, bum, bum. Zim Basics 4. So here we are bringing Texture Active in. And we've done a bunch of bubbling videos on Texture Active and a bunch of Explore videos. Uh, many. Five of them, I think. Explore videos on Texture Active. So this is more just like, hey, a quick look, a, a reminder as to what we can do with Texture Active. So we're bringing in Zim. We are making the slider texture active here. So and it's now a texture active object, which is a container that has sort of special abilities, we'll call it. We're setting that to the size and putting a background color on it. Why don't we take a look at the at this and we'll make sense here? So here's here it is. Now the texture active is just in front of the cube there, and we can use it as well as the orbit zoom. Uh, like so. And I'm going to show you a, another one. The next version is kind of the same, except it's a HUD. So we've got the the slider down at the bottom as a HUD. And that's been sort of why we were, or one of the reasons we were wanting to use Zim all along is, hey, let's use all these Zim components as a HUD for 3.js. But it wasn't quite integrated. Now it can be integrated. In doing the integration, we've realized that there's a whole other half, at least a half, of the usability or the use of that is not on a HUD, but rather actually putting interactive surfaces on, on anything, interactive textures for games and puzzles and art and stuff right on walls or on, on, on models, etc., embedded right in the 3D world. Okay, so half of the use of this texture actives thing is a HUD or interface. The other half is actually putting games and puzzles and stuff right in uh, 3D. So, yay. Exciting. All right. Anyway, let's take a look through the code of this part. We've made a texture active there. Then we take the slider and we're adding it to the texture active. I didn't bother wiring it in this case because if you wire, it works right away. The thing that you're wiring needs to be made. And we have made, uh, I think we might run into an order of operations here. We need the texture active before we can make the 3D stuff. And we need the 3D stuff for the wire to work. So that's that's fine. Just don't use wired. So what we're doing is taking the slider and adding a ticker. And we're rotating the mesh based on the ticker. Um, I suppose that adds this to the ticker. And I would need the mesh. But presumably the mesh is made soon enough. It seems to work. Perhaps if... I wonder if wired would have worked. Might have worked. I thought it wouldn't because... Oh, I see the slight difference. If we wire it, it looks like this, dot wire. So it's not a timing issue, it's a, it's a scope issue or no, whatever. If we wire it and then say mesh dot uh, rotation, uh, what are we, yep, that would be mesh dot rotation here. So we're wiring the, the mesh dot rotation. But if that's as a string, I can't remember, was that as a string or not? wire. No, it's not as a string. So that's a reference. And that reference won't exist until way down here where we have the mesh. So there's our mesh. So we can't wire it to something way down here because we haven't uh, made it yet. So it was just we can't quite do the wire there. If we wanted to, I suppose we could have left it up here and then after we make the mesh we could have wired it. So down here we could have said uh, S dot wire and do that. Yeah, that would that also would have worked. Anyway, at the, at the time that I did this, it was just like whatever. We don't always use wire. We can also set up the slider is with damp with without damping. You don't need to do any of this. So without damping, you wouldn't need the ticker. Uh, do you need a change? Yeah, sorry, you still need to change. Dot change. And then arrow function and slider, and then it would look like this: boo, doo, boo, 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 boo. mesh dot rotation dot y is equal to s dot current value. All right, I would call this the sort of basic slider, where 
you have no damping, you've made your slider. Here we're just setting min and max in a current value. But there's our slider. When it changes, we set whatever we're wanting to change to the slider's current value. And this should work as well. Let me refresh here. And as I do that, it works. But note that there's no damping. It's immediate like that. And when I stop, it just stops cold, which looks awkward when we have damping there. It looks, you know. And mind you, it might be that you want preciseness, uh, at which point maybe this is a bit more precise. I don't know. Or precision. <laughs> preciseness. Uh, <laughs> how you guys doing out there? Mm, hopefully good. Remember, this is a Zim Explorer, so if it ever gets too long for you, you're welcome to go uh, out and get a cookie, put this on pause, get a blueberry, ooh, a blueberry, and when you're all ready, uh, come back in and carry on. So that would be our slider, but this doesn't work well with damping. If you were going to say damp, uh, this isn't really to do with what we're talking about here, but just, just letting you know. If you were to damp at point 0.1, it, it doesn't damp properly because it'll damp while it's being moved maybe, but then when you stop, it still stops initially. And also if you push it, it might go to the wrong spot. So the damping's kind of out of sync with it. So when you damp, you need to use the ticker. And that's when we bring back the ticker like that. And in the ticker, we're changing it to the current value because it doesn't matter if it's changing or not. Um, the damping in behind is changing. Actually, that's kind of interesting. What if we change, the change event is based on moving the slider, but we should make the change event perhaps based on the value of the slider rather than the knob movement. And then we could do a change event. Yeah, I don't know. It's hard to say because change event really should be tracking well I don't know where the button is maybe that's what it is currently tracking as opposed to being delayed and the, anyway blobbity blobbity blob no problem bringing in a slider let's get rid of this bop, or a, a ticker there we go or as mentioned we could have put the wire down beneath after we made so we don't need the mesh created at this point because it's in a it's in a function that gets run slightly later by that time it's already created. All right, and that brings back your damping, like so. All right, we'll call that a tangent. Let's come on back and deal with what we're dealing with here. Here's our 3JS. We're trying to figure out how to do a texture active. For that one, we turn the interactive of 3JS to true because we want to interact with 3JS. And we set texture active true to say that we're using the texture active system. Automatically, that will take your width and height, which we're just getting from the a uh, fit mode or sorry, a full mode. There, this could also have been window dot whatever it is. <laughs> what is it again? Window dot inner width, window dot inner height. So it could have been those. Which one were we looking at? Number four. Um, this is all the same, except we've got the texture active there. When we've got the renders, that's the same. The skybox the same. The controls, almost the same. Yeah, they're the same pretty well. There's our pre-render with our controls.update. Ah, here's something new. We're making a texture actives plural object now. Well, it's just the name of it, texture actives plural right there. So when you make texture actives, each texture active goes in a single texture active. And you put this stuff in there. Then, once we've done our three stuff here, uh, we don't have to use three, but it just makes it a little bit easier. Once we've done that, we come on down and where did our texture active go here? Actives go, here it is. We pass in an array of it. In this case, we've only got one, so you could just say slider, but uh, just prompting you. We could have more than one there. There's our version of three. Here's our version of Zim three. Here's the render, the scene, the camera, and controls, all those values match the names of their things. So this is ES6. We can just do it like that. Otherwise, you could do render colon render, scene colon scene, camera colon cam camera, and controls colon controls. We're turning off the toggle key. We've only got one thing to look at. It would be uh, the, the difference is, and usually for final projects, I was expecting people to turn off the toggle key there. If I hit the T key, 
There is Zim. We can see that. We can kind of scrub various texture actives. There's only one of them. And if I close this here like that, we're back again. Okay, so that's kind of like the toggle to texture active is a behind the scenes sort of. And when you're in production, maybe you want to turn that off. Like so. There's our cube, like before, and here's the slider. So we're using 3.make panel here. We're passing the texture active of the slider. The reason I've gone to the Zim Duo technique, normally this is quite easy to do, it's just 3.make panel, slider, texture actives. So slider is the name of the texture active that this will be mapped with or matching. And texture actives is the name of the texture actives object that we're using. And then we're, uh, this makes a mesh, and then we're adding that mesh to the scene and positioning. We'll come back to that in just a sec. Uh, the reason why we went to Zim Duo technique is we also wanted to set this to double sided so that we could turn and look at it from behind and indeed operate it from behind. It's like, oh my god, isn't that cool? Okay, we can also click on it and jump to it, please. Um, so we wanted to get to double sided. We also put a little curve on it and we, we put in some equations in behind there. We've got from the 3GS forum. Thanks for all those guys who helped out there. But there it is, a normal flat plane like so. Okay, but we've made it quite easy to add a curve to that. And we also added that curve equation to turn any, any plane into a curve plane. We added that functionality to the three helper module. So the three helper modules here, you can convert uh, a, if you don't use the panel version of it and you wanna convert your own plane, that's in the three helper module as well as a method there. And we're curving that so that it comes out towards us rather than in towards us. I think for menu panels and stuff, the, the average would be a curved in like that. Uh, so when we did that one example here, you see that how it's kind of curved in? That looks kind of cool, doesn't it? Okay. So a curve out is that. So it's coming out at you. And oh, if you Think about it, that Z, is that supposed to be the curve in the Z? Mm. Mm. <laughs> Do you see what I'm thinking? The curve in the Z, Z is positive coming out. We maybe should have kept that positive. We're sort of thinking that since we're always curving in or for most, most menus curve in, we'll set that to a positive Z amount, but that's actually negative Z, isn't it? Um. <laughs> Oopsie-ish. We'll see, just realize that now, but whatever. There we go, we have a curve. And there we are adding the slider mesh that that returns to the scene, and we're positioning that zero in the X, minus 50, so that's down in the Y, and out towards us, in out towards us in the Z, and that's why it puts us down a little bit underneath that and kind of out of the way. But that is an issue now. It's sort of getting in the way of, of things. So we might want to put that around the sides as a HUD. So that's the next version. Okay, next version right here is a texture active HUD in 3JS. Let's have a look. So there's our 3JS. Here's our HUD down, down here. Nice, huh? The trick to do this, I'll, yeah, I think, yeah, the trick to do this is to use an orthographic camera and scene around the, um, on top of that. So we've got a perspective camera in here doing this stuff, and we've got the ortho camera doing the HUD. So we did some examples of a more complete HUDs, that being here. This one has a HUD but it's a complicated example. All this stuff was quite complicated to do in here. It involves a noise equation and synthesizer. 
and uh, this part was easy that <laughs> that's what's really nice about it this part is dead easy that's kind of like a built-in selector it's called in zim and we're putting it on this texture to make that texture interactive isn't that cool i mean i think that would be a relatively hard to build in raw 3js for instance and yet it has the feeling of a, a three-dimensional system the one trick behind it was the backing material is invert reversed so we had to put something in place that allows for uh, an easy uh, switch there and we did but anyway there's our hud stuff around the outside so there we are setting how bumpy it is or how uh, smooth it is i guess so there's smoothness and then there's bumpiness I should have made this a normal dial it's kind of hard to operate the sound dial sound dial is when you sort of drag up and down uh, but a normal dial spinning around might have been better for interactivity. Maybe I'll adjust that. And, and then the slider right here as to the speed. So this is HUD stuff around the outside. These these add sound. Oh, hey. Okay. Uh, and then different sound types. So this is the HUD stuff around the outside. Anyway. All that was kind of complicated, so we did add a secondary HUD, HUD one right here, which is just a single mesh right there, and geometry, I can't remember what that's called, some weird space torus or something. But anyway, here's the HUD around the outside of that to change the speed, the color, the, uh, the view of it. So remember that the HUD, even though it's Zim, can change things inside of the, the 3JS world, uh, no problem. And we can even hide that HUD or not hide it. Okay, here the T key, which would bring you to this, makes more sense because now we can uh, take a look at all of the stuff that we're we're putting the texture active on, and it's a little bit you know there's more to look at. All right, so back to the HUD here. How did we do it? Let's go in and take a look. Same, same. Slider pretty well is the same, I guess. Yeah, it looks the same. Here's the 3JS. This is a little bit different in that we've said ortho true. So we're still doing interactive true so we can interact with 3JS, texture active true so the texture active system works, and then ortho true will add a scene ortho, 3.scene ortho, and 3.camera ortho. And ortho camera is uh, flat, basically. So it's in two of the dimensions. It doesn't have to be the dimensions that we've got here, which is, I guess, X and Y. It could also be um, uh, Z and Y or something, whatever. But uh, that's helpful to have this flat camera because then we can position things easier around the edges. You can also do some things like just pop a panel right in front of the camera, but as the camera turns, the, the panel will stay in front of the camera. But it's harder to put things around the edges if you're doing that format. And in the, I think we showed that in the basics one. So back in the first uh, video, the explore video, we showed how to put the object right in front of the camera all the time. So even when we orbit zoomed the camera or orbit controlled the camera, it, uh, the object would stay right in front of your view. All right, carrying on. Uh, skybox like normal, controls like normal, texture actives like normal, except we're passing in the scene ortho and the camera ortho. So that's the only difference there. Before we have passed in the scene and the camera when we were doing the 3D version. Is that this? Yeah, because this is all in the one scene right here. This is two different scenes. One scene for this and one scene for our ortho. So make sure to add the camera and the scene to that. Cube is same as normal. Here are three make panel. That looks the same. We got something different here, and that is we added a pose method to the panel, or to the mesh, I guess. So to the mesh, the mesh gets added a pose method. It's a little bit different than a Zim pose, but it's pretty close. And that is the 0 um, and 50. So 0 from the center and 50 from the bottom. This thing is, 
how do we want to treat we don't need it I was just experimenting with it that thing is if you pass it around on the left and on the right top and bottom etc when you go to squeeze it like this sometimes those things will overlap so that's a gutter and it says don't squeeze past 500 or something when it's in the center I don't think that does anything so that's what I was experimenting with but anyway uh, here it is position 50 up from the center to give you an idea we could go uh, 50 from the left here. so now we get it mounted 50 from the left and we could do 50 from the right and what happens with the gutter is the gutter says hey you know if that's a gutter of 500 or something like that 500 then oh comma a gutter of 500 then we might be able to tell the difference we'll see it depends on our squeezing no i can't can't squeeze enough f12 so now i should be able to squeeze enough see that so it, it won't go it only stays there so far and and then i guess that's 500 and all of a sudden it starts to move and that's so that these things left and right won't overlap one another So it's a little bit different than the Zim pose, which has the object that you're wanting to, or the container that you're wanting to put this object in. But here, it's it's it, that's done separately. So something different. And this was center. And this was zero. Hey, cool, huh? And we add it to the ortho. So make sure to add it to the ortho, otherwise things will get messed up. Add it to the ortho, our slider mesh. And that's the same as before. There you go. You have a quick cut. And this is something that we had been uh, trying to get to, having this sort of HUD with Zim all along. Because then we got this whole nice big 3JS experience. But then the Zim controls here. Woohoo! And once again, uh, beyond that experience, that, that is really cool, great, but what is also cool is when you all of a sudden have that cube, have Zim in it. So now we're getting that big 3JS uh, experience, but this is interactive Zim physics on the textures. Wow! Pretty cool, huh? And that can be used for making games and gadgets. Like here's, here's a puzzle, for instance. We close that. And here I'm going to use my first person controls, but this is Zim Texture Active right here. Oh, and I just lock that on there. If I hit the T key, we can kind of scroll and see that here, here are those textures right here, and they, they work in Zim as well. But each of those is a texture on the Texture Active. What did I do with, oh, this is the Texture Active. Does that not toggle back? Close. Okay, so. That's the puzzle right there, those things that we were seeing. And Zim knows when we get all these, there's a little event. Note the near far, something we haven't talked about, but as you get closer to it, all of a sudden I'm, I'm interactive. So there I'm interactive, but if I go too far away, I'm no longer interactive. So these are the types of things that you'll be able to do now to create interactive surfaces like this. That um, yeah, How exciting. Wow. Note that there are three materials at play here on this cylinder. The two materials for the ends do not have this on it. Initially we had it, hey, just put this one material, this interactive material on here. And then what there is is a little sort of uh, bar up here with a little purple thing and you could drag it on the top you could drag it on the bottom and you could drag it here and they would all change each other so we separated it by passing in an array of materials these two materials on the ends are different than the material the main material here all right ladies and gentlemen this has been a zim explore wow i am dr abstract i hope you have um, enjoyed these explorers through using zim with 3js why don't I uh, just leave you with one last view of what we've done in the past, and that is under examples. It had a, it had a planet. Did you see that? That was a nice planet model somewhere in here. Oh, those are epic. Those are uh, planet. Looking for planet. Uh-oh. Bum, 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 bum. 
Hmm, let's see. Uh, planet. <laughs> let's uh, start the explore music again. Surely it's in here. It's further down than I thought. Ah, oh, there it is. 3D planet. So this is Zim with a swiper. So we're swiping that to make that change, but also we can say where things are on that planet. Do you like that? So this is the sort of Zim around that. Anyway, have a great day or night. I am Dr. Abstract. All the best. Uh, it was good to see you. Come on in to zimjs.com slash slack. zimjs.com slash discord up here. And uh, come and visit us. That would be great. <laughs> Once again, <laughs> our explorer. Here's our, here's our splash screen. Finally, hey, we're done. Yeah. All right. Look forward to hearing from you. All the best.